Hi, my name is Jacob Bukowski with Go Engineer, and today we're going to learn how to make a spring that compresses and elongates with assembly context features. In fact, in this example, I've made a video of this spring moving dynamically uh, just to show exactly what's going to be going on in this lesson. For all intensive purposes, I've created a very simple housing. However, in yours it may look a little bit more complicated. So in this one, we just have a base with, with a fixed end here, the spring base, and a compression piece which moves up and down the bar. That's going to compress and elongate our spring in this model. I made it very simple for demonstration purposes. However, in your model, it may be a vise, it may be a, a pen assembly. Um, and there are many applications in which you may need to show your boss uh, that you need to make a spring that moves with the piece. So let's go ahead and design that spring now that we have the housing. In this example we're going to use the sweep feature to create this. We're not going to use the helix feature. Um, for this type of movable spring this is more for aesthetic reasons so I would not recommend using this for simulations but this is a very good way to demonstrate the capability of the spring you're going to create. So we're going to go ahead and create this by making a new part. And I'm going to create a, a sketch. A I'm going to sketch a line here. Excuse me, I need to be an inch. I'm going to sketch a line here on the front plane. This is vertical. And note that I'm not going to dimension it. Note that I have two relationships here. I have the vertical and coincident to the origin but this uh, end here, the end here is blue, the point at the other end of the line, so that I can, so that I can move it around. This is very important. I'm going to accept this sketch, and then I'm going to make my sweep, sweep profile sketch. So I'm going to make another sketch on the front plane, and I'm going to sketch a circle. And I'm going to make it one inch in diameter. Actually, let's make it three quarter inch. And I'm going to add some relationships here. I want to make sure that this is horizontal. And I'm going to measure the distance between the two at 2.75 inches. Excellent. Accept the sketch. It's entirely black. I know that it is fully defined. I'll go back into this one, maybe make it a little bit taller, exit the sketch, and now I'm going to create my, my spring sweep feature by hitting sweep boss base. For the sketch profile, I'm going to select the circle that I've created, and for the sweep path, I'm going to select the line. Now, in the options, I'm going to make sure that I have a twist. I'm going to specify a twist value in this case. And the twist control will be in revolutions. Uh, and I want five revolutions. Notice that my spring generates. I have a, a spring with five revolutions, and it appears in the preview window. Hit green check to accept the changes. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to create a plane. Actually, I'm going to show my sketches in the display manager. Make sure that I can select this line that it's shown. And I'm going to create a plane that is normal here. So I select a point in the line, and that will create a plane normal to this sketch. And notice that it intersects part of the spring here. Hit green to accept the changes. And I'm going to go to my surfaces tab here, and I'm going to use cut with surface because I want to make the sides the uh, I want to make a coincident plane that's planar so that I can make this to my assembly housing. Flip the direction of cut and accept the changes. And I'm going to do the same thing here, but accept the top plane as my cut with surface. Notice that the direction of cut is going to cut this part this bottom part off here 
hit the green check, and accept those changes as well. Excellent. So now my spring is pretty much defined here. <clears throat> and now I have to just bring it into the context of my assembly. Now I can easily drag and drop my spring. I'm going to save it actually. Save as. Excuse me. And drag it into my assembly. Now. I'm going to make sure that I mate this planar face with the planar face of the fixed end here. Notice my coincident mate appears. Hit the green check to accept. And I'm also going to mate this spring concentrically. Good. Now I've, I've made it the bottom. But I need to mate, in fact, actually, I'm going to edit that mate and lock its rotation so that the spring does not rotate. Now, I need to make sure that when I move this top piece, I want the spring to move up and down with it. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to edit this sketch. Go ahead and edit the sketch in context. Remember that we never defined a dimension for this sketch. It's very important that this end point of the sketch is blue. So now is where I'm going to make an in-context relationship. So I'm going to select this point, hold control, and select the edge here. And notice that in my property manager, my selected entities, uh, the edge of the compression piece and the point of the sketch and I need to add a relation since there are no existing relations. I'm going to add a coincident relation. Hit the green check. I'm going to exit the sketch to rebuild and notice that the spring is already updated. Now watch if I move the compression piece the spring does not move but but if I rebuild, control B, or hit the green traffic light, it will. Let's do that again. Now, control B, and my spring updates with the compression piece. So this is a pretty cool technique, but I want to show my boss that I want this spring to move fluid, fluid, fluidly inside the context of the assembly. So for that, we're going to actually create a motion study video so that I can put it in my PowerPoint. Now, I'm going to start with the spring and compression. This is the initial state of the spring. And I don't have to rebuild every time to show him. So let's create a new motion study and create a video that moves fluidly. I'm going to create a new motion study. And I know that the first four seconds, I'm going to drag it to its elongated position. So I move the slider bar to four seconds. And I'm going to move it up to its elongated position. Let's play. And we see the spring moving. Excellent. Now let's create another point eight seconds from now. And I want to show it depressing. So I'm going to move it back down. And I'm going to hit play. And now it moves up and it's going to move down. Excellent. So now I can just save this animation. Dynamic spring housing. I'm going to render the SolidWorks screen and the entire animation. And we're going to call it dynamic spring housing numero dos. would like to recalculate. So it's going to recalculate. <clears throat> oh 
All right. And now, if I look in my folder, I have a dynamic spring housing too. And voila, I have a fluid moving spring to show my boss. Once again, my name is Jacob Bakovsky with Go Engineer. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Dynamic Springs. And have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.